All right, so welcome ladies. I'm so glad you're here for this new cycle, new, uh, new year. We are excited because we've got lots of new things coming with the Rooted Cafe and I think you're gonna love all the stuff. And yeah, so I'm excited about this class because it's about Shabbat. And that's the beginning of our cycle, right? We learn about Shabbat and all of that stuff. So yeah, um, love, love, love it. And of course, you know, you know me, our healing comes through many ways that the Father has provided and our issues live in our tissues. So I like to use the this particular tool essential oils to help begin that journey of healing so let's pray father we thank you oh we thank you for the beautiful season of your feast time that we just came through and all that you showed us all that you brought us through the ups and downs the mountains and valleys and that you are still so steadfast and there and that we get to walk this journey with you holding hand in hand and uh sometimes we're behind you sometimes we're next to you and sometimes we're in front of you trying to go ahead of you but you calm us and you keep us right where you need us and i thank you for that and i thank you for these precious scents that we get to use to bring healing to our bodies both emotionally physically um and spiritually because we need it. I know I do. And I thank you for the healing you've done in me. I lift up these women, father and their families, because these women are here to learn and grow. And this will carry into their homes, into their families, into their generations. And that is what it's about, father, healing, healing for your nations. So we take a deep breath. We ask you to come be present. Father, and just any words that are not of you, we ask that they wouldn't even be spoken. We ask that you open our hearts and our minds to receive what you have for us and guide us along the way. Cause us to have those, those, um, oh, what does Charlie call it? Anyway, those thoughts that come in that you're just speaking to us in so many areas. Thank you, Father. Thank you for being with us. And it's in your precious name. Amen. Okay, so I said the Shabbat. And so have you all do, and this is participation. Like we've opened this up to where this can be participation. I don't have to be the only one talking. So feel free to turn your camera on or not to turn your uh your sound on or not and join in okay so have you all done the Havdalah service at the end of Shabbat they it's something that they they do and I honestly I have not done this a lot but one of the things is we smell the spices, the Keteret blend, they call it. And I believe I'm pronouncing that right. Um, don't shoot me if I'm not. Work in progress. But this is a blend of essential oils, or I mean, of spices. And I put, to, put together the list of essential oils to talk about. We don't have all of these that are listed in, if you Google the uh the uh, spices. We don't have all of them in the oils, but we have some, and those are the ones I listed. And we're going to talk about the um, some of the physical attributes, some of the emotional attributes. And I just, as I was putting this together, you know, I I thought about doing this a couple months ago for today for this month, and then as I'm reading the Torah, I'm like. <gasps> Oh, Father, you're so good. You're so much better than I am because you put this together. And it's where we get to learn about Shabbat 
And here we are. So this might be something that you can diffuse every Shabbat. Because when you hear about the attributes that he spoke to me, and he'll continue to speak to you too. So, you know, that's why we are going to provide that journal page. Um, or you can have your own book to journal in. So they say, we say a blessing over the spices. And I'd like to read that to you. So I am not good at all the Hebrew words. So I'm going to read it in English, but you can Google this. And I encourage you to and learn more about it. Um, because it's really beautiful. So the blessing over the spices is blessed are you, God, our Lord, King of the universe, creator of the spices, um, who separates between the holy and profane, between the light and dark, between Israel and the other nations, between the seventh day and the six days of the week. Blessed are you, God, who separates the holy and profane. And I just love, love, love that. So now that I have uh, studied this a little more and learned some more over this past couple months about this, I'm like, oh yeah, it's in my Shabbat day, you know, from now on. Um, so, you know, we read about Shabbat in Genesis 2-3, um, where he completed his work. And you can write down this scripture that's the beginning where we first hear about it and his work is done. He was resting on the seventh day from the work, from the, all that he created and he sanctified it because in it, he rested from all his work and all that he had made at that time. And then we get to continue. And if you haven't done it yet, then I encourage you to go to blue letter Bible and type in the search bar. Shabbat or Sabbath rather, because I don't think they have it as Shabbat and pull up all the scriptures. So some of them after Genesis, Exodus 16, 23, then he said to them, this is what the Lord meant. Tomorrow is a Sabbath observance, a holy Sabbath to the Lord. Bake what you will bake and boil what you will boil and all that is left over put aside to be kept until morning so we can rest. Exodus 20, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. But the seventh day is a Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter or your male or your female servants or your cattle or your sojourner who stays with you. Continuing on, for in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in it, and rested on the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the seventh day and made it holy. So we see so much is about Shabbat and our resting. And there's so much that we can go into with this um, emotionally and physically, because we just need a break. And I don't know about you. You can raise your hand. You can say, yep, that's me. How often do we get to Shabbat and we're like, oh, thank you. <laughs> I get to rest. I get to rest because our week has been so busy, right? So love that. All right. So our first spice in this blend. So our first oil is cassia. And does anybody here love cassia? I know I do. Something that uh, I have... The, the cinnamon that I have is a cinnamon cassia. Uh-huh. Uh, is that something different or is that just a blend of the two? So cassia, I don't know, is that clear where you can see that? Yes. And then it says right here, cassia or cinnamon cassia. So yes. Oh, okay. Yep. That's okay. what it is. Okay. And so cassia on an emotional level brings gladness and courage to our heart and soul. It is a wonderful remedy for our uh, shyness, our timidness, you know, and I don't know about you, but there's times when I'll enter a room where I don't know anybody and I'm a little shy and timid and that's okay. 
what this is talking about is that those times when you're holding back and you're trying to hide, you're trying to avoid being the center of attention and it helps to restore your confidence. Not that you all of a sudden become the center of attention, but it restores your confidence inside because that's what it's about, right? What's going on inside? Am I connected? Am I walking in unity with the father? Do I have confidence? Because what does he say? You are strong and courageous. We can do anything in him, right? So it dispels, it helps to dispel, similar to cinnamon, and we'll go into cinnamon as well, the fear and helps to replace it with self-assurance. Now, it also challenges the individual to try, even though they may be fearful of making a mistake, like saying something they shouldn't. And if you're quickened with that, then apologize. It's okay. We all do things. We all say things. But it helps to support you if you're scared of making this mistake. And what I think of is public speaking, right? Like who loves public speaking? Uh, some do, some don't. Most people I talk to don't because they're like, they're scared of being in front of everybody, making a mistake. So when we use this fragrance, it helps to bring that confidence. And I love that it's included in this and for Shabbat because we can walk confidently in him. And as we enter into Shabbat and we rest, he begins, I don't know about y'all, Have raise your hand or speak up. And have you ever had where Shabbat, he's just pouring out his spirit on you and, and yeah, Charlita, yes, he's pouring it out on you and he's revealing things to you. And maybe he shows you a mistake, but maybe he shows you just that self-assurance that you're on the right path. You know, maybe you've been having thoughts of something and now on Shabbat, you get to check into it and learn and research in his word. And what is, what does he mean by this? And you, it grows that confidence, like it's downloads, right? And cinnamon is terrific for warming us. So it's great for massage, warming our body, warming our insides. It's, it's, I just, I love it. And if y'all know me, you know, I love it in my chai blend. If you need to know what that is, I'll tell it to you at the end, or I'll put it in the, in the comments. Um, so we're going on to cinnamon now. Oh, before I move on, cassia to me is <clears throat> the fragrance is a little sweeter than cinnamon. Okay. Cinnamon to me is a little more. strong, I guess. And so I love both of them. I mean, I do. I love both of them. Put them both in my chai blend. Sometimes I'll put one, sometimes I'll put another, but both of them together, amazing. Uh, so cinnamon, what does that do? Emotionally, it helps us to accept our body and embrace our physical attractiveness you know, and that's one of the things that Shabbat did for me <clears throat> is learning that he loves me so much. He gave me Shabbat. He loves me. He adores me. And I'm beautiful in him. And that's okay. So all those flaws I thought I had are gone. I mean, for the most part, you know, we always have those little, eh annoying thoughts that come to take that away, but it also helps to encourage you that you're not rejected, you know, and that isn't that Shabbat, like you're not rejected, you get to sit with the king, like the king of kings, and enjoy him, and be nurtured by him, and oh, how beautiful is that? 
Can anybody relate? I hope you all can relate. Um, Cinnamon, was somebody going to say something? Well, hi, it's Rhonda. We Hello. Met. Yes. We met. Okay. Yeah, it's so good. I'm so glad to be able to jump on and see you all. Um, I was just thinking about your question about Shabbat, and I thought when I first started keeping it, um, I didn't, I, I traveled, so I only kept it sparingly. And then little by little, I started connecting with people there. And I had prayed that, you know, that the father would bless me with friends. I didn't really have like close relational friends um, just because of, you know, childhood issues of being bullied and stuff like that. Mm. But once I started keeping Shabbat and started making some kind of connections and I, I asked the father just for one friend and mm. He did bless me with a friend and I didn't find out until about a year and a half to maybe two years later that the woman that I had become like close friends with, she said she had been praying the same prayer that the father with a close friend, with somebody like a soul friend, you know, like, yes, not just an acquaintance and Shabbat then became a whole new meaning for me because I was connecting with a woman of, of God. And yeah. I was connecting in a way that I had never experienced before. And so then I started learning about all the other attributes of, of Shabbat. And then it became a place to look forward to. Yes. My, my, my kids too. My, you know, we lived in the city and I homeschooled. So I yearned for like good companionship for them. And so yes. that was the place, that fellowship where the father led me to was mm-hmm. a place that they also found fellowship in. And so you're right. Shabbat has its own um, aroma. It does. It has, it has its own like spiritual like aura. Like you just go and you know you're in a place of sacred gathering. Right? Amen, yeah. sister. Yeah. Amen. And that's, you know, that's why I love these fragrances. And when I was looking at this, Specifically with this uh, spice blend, I was like, wow. And as I, you know, look at the attributes of the scents, I'm even more wowed by him that it's, and it's, you know, the list is in the Bible. I'd have to look for the the scripture. I think I have it later on because I do have scriptures um, and a little bit of notes, just key phrases to remember things. But, you know, where he put these together for us to enjoy and we need to like we need to and so yeah back to cinnamon as far as you know they call this a um an energy in our sexuality and like shabbat as i've learned is i'm not going to call it feminine energy but it's like the blend of both to me um, where we get to nurture and be nurtured and we also get to like be strengthened in our in our walk in our convictions in our in our relationship with the father right and doesn't that make you stronger and so the blend you know the the cinnamon is kind of what that reflects for me that on a physical level, yes, they do say it is a sexual energy because possibly because it's warming again, great massage oils. Um, It allows freedom. Think about a massage and the freedom that it brings the, the stress releasing in those months, muscles and tension. Um, You know, it helps to lay down facades and even pride. So those pretenses that we tend to do. And when we start observing Shabbat, like that's it, right? Boom. We get that. We get it. We get it. Um, So now frankincense. And you know, he's the king, right? Love it. That's why it was given to our savior. And oh, I have talked about frankincense many, many times. It is just 
for me and what I have learned about frankincense physically is that it is the, the oil that begins to open us up, opening those cells, opening healthy, healthy cellular function, circulation. There's so much about frankincense, the calming attributes of it. Um, you know, you can put this just bottle tip it and put it on the roof of your mouth, right on the back of that little V right behind your uh, head, right up at that skull point. And it has the ability to go into that, you know, and go beyond that blood, blood brain barrier to bring that calmness, that, that sense of, of love to me, you know, I don't <laughs> love because when I open it <sighs> and smell that fragrance, it just makes my shoulders go down. It's beautiful. Anybody else like frankincense? You can raise your hand. Love it. So frankincense is in here. Yep. Who is that? Kimberly? Oh, it's just me. I, was, I love it. Use it pretty much every day. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Charlita. So many uses. So many. So good. And then we come to that myrrh. And I want to talk about myrrh here because myrrh is... Some people have a, a love-hate relationship with it <laughs> because they either love the smell or they don't. Um, but it also begins to work in the action of our emotions with our mother and childhood. And I think that's another reason that it was um, it was given and spoken of so much with our Savior because what was happening? There wanted to be a disturbance with the mother that that mom taken away what was Herod doing trying to get all the babies take them away and this didn't happen to our savior he was protected and so I think there's an element of protection there and so myrrh helps to bridge the gap with healing uh, whether it's someone who's been adopted and they've had that bond broken with their mater you know, their birth mother or any other birth trauma, because it's a beautiful anointing oil. I love to have myrrh ready for my birth clients, um, you know, because a baby is now birthed and it's out of that protectiveness, gone through the birth canal, which is some trauma. But what it does is it helps to uh, to just kind of bring a bond back, if that, if that makes sense. And you can use this on an umbilical cord to help with healing, uh, reduces inflammation and all of that for that little baby. Uh, it helps us to forgive ourselves too in our relationship with our mom and with our dad as well, because we can have things with our dad. Um, it's terrific for gut health, for mouth health. So you see, I'm going kind of back and forth here with the physical and the emotional side. Uh, myrrh is just beautiful for forgiving and releasing guilt, um, you know, guilt is not of the father. Now there's conviction, which yes, that is, that's the Holy Spirit convicting us. Uh, but with that comes, you know, our need to forgive ourselves too. And I believe that these two together, frankincense and myrrh, create that safe space to be able to do that um so yeah and then you know you y'all i hope you have your oils with you if not get them you can reach out to me and i can help you get them whatever ones you need to add somebody wants to say something 
Yeah, I have a question real quick. Uh-huh. Um, I know you said it was either kind of a love or a hate relationship. If it is something that is like to me, the frankincense has absolutely no smell at all. Interesting. And the myrrh mm-hmm. <clears throat> smells like wet gauze. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and, that's that's interesting. Is, is, is that kind of a sign that that's something that my body needs? Yes, exactly. Okay. Yes, you hit the nail on the head. It is definitely because just like we are drawn to a fragrance and it bring, you know, a fragrance can bring back an emotion of joy and and love. Well, a fragrance can bring back that negative and make us go, oh, no, I don't want that. I don't want to go near that. And so that's exactly what our body needs. And I, I have my own personal testimony with that, um, with one of our blends, because, oh, did not, could not handle it. We can talk about that another time. But uh, yes, definitely. And so how do we get past that <sighs> love-hate relationship more on the hate side? Well, rub, put it in a roller ball, put both of them, rub them on the bottom of your feet. That way you don't have to smell them, but yet it's getting into your cells, getting into your body and it will work even without the smell, just by rolling it on because it has the ability to change the cells, it can do the work just by rolling it on versus uh, smelling it. And it can change those emotions, change those relationships that are perhaps not so pleasing, you know, with it. Um, Yeah, frankincense is terrific for uh, getting to our truth getting to our truth. I know the rollerball thing absolutely works. I mm-hmm. have a, I have a cinnamon blend that I use for my sugar. Yes. And I rub that on my feet every night before I go to bed. And when I wake up, my sugar is lower than the nights that I don't. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, it does definitely work. Myrrh is also good for like indigestion, ulcers, colds, um, coughs, asthma, lung congestion. So even rolling it on your heart area as you go to bed, you know, if you don't, uh, maybe you don't want to do that when you go to bed because you might, this, the fragrance may come up and you may not like that. So put it on your feet. Uh, but it's also, myrrh is also for reproductive health. Um, And that's something I think is kind of interesting too. Like, you know, I've talked about Esther and how it was given, you know, she was prepared with myrrh and because of reproductive health. So think about it in that sense too. And I just, you know, in relation to Shabbat, like we're growing, we're being birthed into him, right? Every Shabbat we get to to sit and rest with him and learn. And we, you know, listen to a teaching for the week. You know, the Rooted Cafe is great. Oh my goodness. If you haven't listened to Charlie and the uh the Torah portions for the week, I encourage you to do that. If you haven't listened to all of them, go back and listen to some because it's birthing something in you. And that's what Mur is about too. And Shabbat's a great day to do that. Go back and listen to ones that you need to catch up on because, you know, life happens and we don't always get to do the things we want to do. So yeah. All right. So to go on, clove. I have clove in here Mm, because clove is all about boundaries. Does anybody need boundaries or need to let go of some unhealthy 
things, boundaries. Mm. Charlita, did you raise your hand this time or was that from last time? That was from last time. <laughs> okay. Okay. Just making sure. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. This is all new to me. So I'm, I'm going to definitely be going to your, wherever you have to go. <laughs> awesome. Good. Okay. Yes. Okay. So clove boundaries, letting go, creating healthy boundaries. If our issues live in our tissues, why do we think that is? It's because we have created a boundary. Okay. Boundaries aren't always bad. So don't get me wrong here. Boundaries can be healthy. You know, think of um, the home you live in, the walls around you. You know, we just went through Sukkot and a lot of us camped. Some of us did, some of us didn't, or maybe we were just out in that tent, but then we went back inside to sleep. You know, that there's, there's, there are healthy boundaries, but what I'm talking about here is letting go of those unhealthy boundaries. And Ezekiel, some of you I've talked to about Ezekiel, he says, I'm going to give you a new heart with healthy boundaries, healthy. So being proactive, standing up for yourself is a attribute of clove, feeling capable of making your own choices, letting go of old patterns maybe codependency patterns, uh, and just really creating those healthy, appropriate boundaries. And then again, this is a, a hot oil to, to the skin. So it encourages that inner fire within to be steadfast and strong. And I don't know about anyone here or anyone listening later, but when we first started this journey, like there were struggles in the home of how do we do Shabbat? Do we do Shabbat? What day do we do Shabbat? Because I came from a Christian church and it was new and oh my goodness. And so as we began learning and growing on Shabbat about him, we became more steadfast and strong. And I have used these oils for as long as we've been doing Shabbat. So I believe that they have just kind of helped in that fragrance area in the brain, in the mind to help establish those healthy boundaries, those healthy patterns. And that's what I'm talking about here. So if you haven't already, go ahead and, oh, just take all of them and smell that beautiful fragrance. It smells so good. So, so good. Okay, so now we are moving on to Rose. And who here loves Rose? I do. Don't you love getting roses? I love it. Mm -hmm. I use it every day for perfume. Yeah, right? My grandmother used to, and I just loved that. And so when I smell it, I immediately, there goes that emotional response to my grandmother because I was very close to her that's actually the reason I started wearing because I wanted my kids to associate like as they're growing up and you know I'm going to be yeah. gone one day I wanted them to every time they smelled it to think about me isn't that amazing oh that's beautiful I love that Kimberly I love that yeah so Rose okay what you just said encompasses Rose to me it is a divine love and isn't that what we have for our children? But even better than that, that's what he has for us, a divine love. And so this communicates to us. It's the highest vibration oil and healer of our heart. It supports us in reaching to heaven and the word and to connecting with him. It encourages grace for ourself too. And it is kind of an intervention into our healing process because it helps to soften our heart, right? V highest vibration, heart healer, helps to soften our heart, helps us to let go, to um, feel the warmth and compassion of our father. Have you ever felt a hug from him? 
right? I'm sure you have. It helps to create a sense of well-being. And it's also anti-inflammatory. It's one of it's one of the top uh, additives to like wound infection. Um, it helps to reduce scarring. So you see some of this stuff, scars of our heart or scars of our imperfections on our skin. Kind of cool, huh? Charlita, did you have a question? No. Okay. Just making sure. Um, so yeah, now I have to smell all of these together because with each fragrance that you add, Oh, it just makes it even better. Oh my goodness. So good. Okay. The next one is galbanum. And so galbanum comes in our biblical oil uh, kit. And with that, you also get myrtle and frankincense and myrrh and cystus and hyssop. So let me know if you want that because you're going to get three of the oils that I'm talking about today right in that. All right, so galbanum is in the incense. And it's a different kind of a smell. I'll be honest. I love it. But it's different. It's, um, it's talked about in Exodus. Uh, the Lord says to Moses, take for yourself spices. And galbanum is one of them that's listed as well as your frankincense. And you all, uh, Kimberly put in the chat, the blue letter Bible link. So I encourage you just put some of these in there and you'll see where he fought the, our father talks about them for us. Okay. So galbanum is known to remove or re, uh, relieve rather anger and depression. <sighs> somebody wants to say something maybe so releasing relieving anger and depression you know when we start this walk we can kind of feel like oh my gosh this is overwhelming what do I do we can become irritable because I want to do this and so and so doesn't oh, I don't understand and I'm frustrated with myself. Um, we, be, we can become paranoid that we're going to lose all our friends because we're walking in something that the father's asked us to. And it's a little scary because we don't even understand all of it, right? However, the beauty of this is it can release just the fragrance, ladies, can release emotions of all of that. And it, galbanum is uh, soothing and relaxing to our nervous system, reducing emotional rigidity and releasing energy for creative processes. So what does that mean to me? When I'm sitting in Shabbat and I'm smelling these fragrances, I'm more open to receiving what he has. And that's what it's about, right? Opening those pathways emotionally, physically. Physically, it helps to support our kidneys. Uh, so it's in the carrot family. So it's a di it can be a digestive thing because it's in the carrot and fennel family. And it's high on the auric scale just like our clove is. It's not as high as it, but, and the auric scale is the uh, uh, oxygen radical absorbency capacity. And so what is that? Well, they talk about the auric scale with blueberries and carrots and all different kinds of foods. So here you go. You can use your fragrances for antioxidant auric scale, high antioxidants. Um, okay, so galbanum is also good for uh, spiritual awareness. 
And science, oh my goodness, one article I found, and I have it somewhere. Um, I did record that article. I don't have it right now, but you can reach out to me and I can send it to you. Uh, it is, the science is looking at it as acetaminophen and calcium carbonate compacts, indicating that it could be used to produce tablets for specific purposes as an alternative substitute binder in the pharmaceutical industry. How cool is that, right? So science is doing lots of stuff with all of these fragrances and the attributes that they have for us. Um, yeah, it's actually from the APACI plant, and it's the, from the root is what I understand it to be from. And so, yeah, all things hard again. Uh, nervous system. Oh, it's smelling so good. Are you all smelling these? I hope you are. Because it's just beautiful. Okay, our last one here. And just remember, there are more spices in the actual blend. So you can go and get that. All right, so our last one I'm going to talk about is spikenard. Do y'all like spikenard? The scent? one of those that is a peculiar scent to me, but I like it because it helps to create gratitude. And it's also in the valerian family. Have you heard of valerian root? Uh, valerian tincture, very calming, very, uh, I don't, I don't necessarily want to say sedating, but yet sedating in a good sense, because it helps calm the nervous system. And so in the emotional sense, gratitude and appreciation for life. And isn't that what Shabbat's all about? I mean, really, when we rest in Shabbat, and I know for myself um, and others, there's a sense of a huge release of blame and anger. And I mean, so <laughs> Shabbat for our family, my husband and I specifically, you know, the week presents lots of different things, right? Lots of um, ups and downs, perhaps lots of uh, times for miscommunication, or no communication with my spouse. My husband is he's the best, but you know, we've gone through times as I'm sure probably you all have too. And it may, be, may not be your spouse. It may be somebody else, but when Shabbat comes and I sit across the table from him, if we've had anything and we haven't resolved it, which we're supposed to every night, right? Before we lay our head down. But if we haven't, Shabbat comes and I look across the table and I go, oh, Thank you, Father, for your Shabbat, where I can rest from all of that. And even those hard times, releasing and letting go of the anger, letting go of whatever in the week, it's a surrender. It's a surrender. But I'm surrendering to my Father, my Heavenly Father, versus my husband sitting across the table from me, right? And when I do that, that's when our relationship heals. And he does the same thing because we just look at each other and we're like, Shabbat's what it's about, spending time with our father and with my loved one. And why am I, why? Like, it's gone. And that is what a spikenard fragrance can do. Now, I love having it all in this together because, like I said, to me, spikenard's a little different, but putting it all together oh, is just beautiful. Mm, just beautiful. So 
these fragrances truly, truly can expand and grow our walk. They can give us deep, deeper meaning because we're able, because of the attributes of calming the nervous system, releasing what needs released, we can sit there and accept the abundance that the Father has for us. Even if we have challenges during the week, even if we have challenges that we ourselves have been struggling with and with no one else. Um, it can expand and grow our walk. And I'm telling you, sisters, like this fragrance will be in my diffuser. I'm going to take an empty bottle. So do y'all save your empty bottles? Take an empty bottle. Maybe one that's in this fragrance blend and add each of these to it that way all you have to do is drop a little few drops in that diffuser and now you've got this blend diffusing on Shabbat with all these different attributes and this fragrance and this the tenderness and the joy that it's going to bring I love that so can um spike nard I do have uh it is anti uh bacterial, antifungal, anti-inflammatory because it's relaxing you. Uh, it has calming properties like for allergies and uh, perhaps migraines, uh, wounds that maybe don't heal. It can reduce some of that inflammation going there. Uh, indigestion, that can be inflammation in the body. Uh, and there is a report or a doctor, Dr. Dietrich Gumbel, who reported that it helps to strengthen the heart and the circulatory system. I love that. And so Spikenard, all about love. And there's lots of references, ladies, in Song of Songs. So if you have not read Song of Songs, that's the love book, right? All about love, loving the bride, loving the groom, and Spike Nard's in there, as well as some others. So yeah, um, I'd like to open it up for any of you to ask a question, make a comment, tell me what you think of the fragrance. Oh. Mm -hmm. Debbie? Yes? Hey, so... I was, as I was listening to um, talk about spike nard, I don't think I've ever smelled that aroma. Um, and I don't, so I know I don't have it, but as I would listen to your words, um, uh, I was visualizing the things that you were saying. And it made me say, when you, because you used the word peculiar a couple of times, I thought, you know what? After hearing everything you had to say about it, I thought, this particular scent makes sense to have a, a strong, a strong um, aroma uh, to it because it has a big job to do. Right. It yes. has a big job. Like it, it's got some like, I mean, not every, every oil has its job and purpose, but this one has a heavy one. And so when you ended it with saying that it's a, it's good to, it helps to strengthen the heart mm -hmm. and system I'm like well yes the heart the heart is the hub of the life within the body so like it has to be uh it has to have some strong attributes to help the strongest member in the body yes amen and we're a peculiar people right <laughs> uh, yeah so how much more that <laughs> verse means to me <laughs> yeah I thought so we need some extra heavy duty stuff to like help to, to repair and, and um, heal the heart issues that we often have. Yes. And what happens when we heal those heart issues? We get healing in the body because yeah. now the flow, whether, you know, there's so much research and studies being done about energy right now and Tesla and all the all the stuff, whether we agree with the flow of energy, I mean, Chinese medicine, love or hate it, you know, Eastern, whatever, they've been doing it for thousands of years. 
to release and get that flow moving in our body. It is so important. So yeah, using these strong scents to help break down some of those walls, like he says he'll help us do, do it. I mean, I think of the wall of Jericho, right? What was that wall for? Well, it was a boundary, but he broke it down because he wanted them to have it, right? Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah is right. So, yeah. Enjoy your fragrance because I'm telling you, if you don't have them all together, I think uh, Kimberly, she says she's diffusing it right now. Isn't it lovely? Like, mm, I just like, yeah. Debbie, I did have, um, I wondered if you could spell the, the eighth oil that started with a, a G, Galabum or Gala? G-A-L-B-A-N-U-M. Oh, Galabum. Okay. Yeah. Gal- Galbanum. Galbanum. Gal- I posted a list of all the oils um, in the chat. Oh, so sorry. Thank you. Oh, no, no, no. It's okay. I'm just letting you know. Yeah, you can copy and paste that. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? Because we're going to need to, uh, we have a team meeting today that we'll have to get to. So if we want to stop the recording, we can do I do that. have one quick question. Uh-huh. Uh huh. You had mentioned something about a biblical oil.